Thank you for inviting me. Um, so my name is Jay Konieczka. I'm one of the co-founders of Envolve, along with Farron Isaacs and George Church, who some of you may know, uh, and also our CEO, Marco Farshid. And we engineer microbes to produce uh, bio-based products, uh, both together with commercial partners and also our own proprietary targets. Um, our approach is fundamentally different from others in our space. Uh, we have technologies inside the cell that allow us to build and screen up to billions of genomic designs in a matter of a month. Um, and I'll tell you a bit about how we do that. Um, and, and this is also, I should note, without heavy uh, investment in automation. So the challenge in engineering microbes is basically the complexity of biology. So, um, you know, we're all familiar with the design, build, test, and now analyze and learn because we don't infringe on trademarks at Evolve. We insist that we have to analyze them first. So um, we, you know, we're, we're all familiar with this, and, and we all know that, you know, given the complexity of biology, as you iterate through this process, this serial process, you have to be uh, very aware now. Uh, we're, we're beyond the scope of just or optimizing a simple pathway. We have to be looking at the whole organism, right? So it, it requires just a tremendous amount of uh, throughput to make it through this process efficiently and explore the vastness of the genome space that we're dealing with. And our platform uh, does exactly that. Um, so this is, this is it in a nutshell. Uh, we have variation technology. Uh, which delivers mutations in a massively parallel fashion, and I'll tell you about that. Uh, and then we screen the cells uh, on an individual cell-by-cell -cell basis in an ultra-high-throughput fashion with technology again inside the cell. And then, of course, we analyze, characterize, learn from them, uh, and that informs the next design cycle. So the, the variation technology is actually MAGE. I think most of you are familiar with MAGE. Uh, and what MAGE allows us to do is, is deliver in a m massively parallel fashion uh, uh, single point mutations, arrays of point mutations, insertions, deletions at multiple loci in the genome simultaneously. Uh, and we do this in a cyclical fashion so that we end up with a culture where every strain is precisely engineered and uniquely different from every other strain in the culture. So there's a combinatorial pool of strain variants, which then poses a new challenge, which is, you know, how do you screen through that genomic haystack to find the good needles? Uh, and that, for that we have sensors, and these are allosteric transcription factors that we actually engineer at Envolve uh, to recognize the specific and desired target molecule that we want to produce. I don't have time to get into how this works, but in a matter of months to now, uh, in some cases weeks, we can turn around a sensor, and it's actually a panel of sensors that respond in different fashions to the uh, production of the desired target molecule. So these are there and present and driving gene expression, either a uh, GFP or some other kind of reporter, maybe a selection marker. And those strains that are producing more of the target molecule, we can then literally uh, see within the population. So our sweet spot is right there in this, in this uh, cycle, uh, is right there at the build and test phases. Uh, if you were going to try and do uh, this with automation, heavy investment in automation, you're going to end up with something like 30 robots, uh, you know, and $10 million in CapEx to just get to 10,000. And these numbers are based off of literature and our own uh, experience in other facilities in our space uh, to do a whole build and test cycle. Um, and, and this is, you know, roughly within 50% of reality. Um, so, but for us, the same amount of uh, people babysitting such a robot farm can be running one project with a billion strains that we can build and screen. And of course, this scales linearly. Uh, if you were to try to do this with traditional automation, it gets a little ridiculous. Um, you're going to need a lab the size of Boston full of robots. So our tech is portable. We're now in uh, multiple species beyond uh, E. coli where we started. Now we're in cerevisiae and difficult to work with gram positives. Uh, and this enables new spaces that can be explored rapidly in a cost-effective manner. So because of the high probability of success, we're ta taking on projects that you wouldn't approach with uh, traditional methods. Uh, and our, our we're delivering for our partners, and as a result, we're growing and uh, raising our Series B. Um, so if any of you are interested in joining us in some way, please come find me after the talk. Thank you. Thanks, very interesting talk. So it seems like the way you get to those 
really diverse uh, pools is by uh, doing the fermentation to produce whatever product you're interested in all together uh, in, one, in one tube. So if you're producing something, if you're trying to optimize the production of something that can diffuse out of the cell and into other cells, will you actually be able to identify the winners among them who are producing the most? Yeah, very good point. So there's a couple of different ways we approach that. One, I mean, at, at the end of the day, when you want to look at the, the end product that is highly diffusible, you got to start separating the cells. So we have, we have techniques for that using microencapsulation as well as plating sometimes often works and allows you to enrich. Uh, but then there's um, the other tack we sometimes take is engineer a sensor for an upstream metabolite that we can make sure it doesn't leave the cell, at least not quickly, and optimize for that, and then you push flux down the rest of the way.